Hello students, how are you doing today? Today, we will start with yet another session of chapter 15, probability. But today, we will do a lot of questions based on this topic. Before that, let us recall what we had studied in our earlier session. We had studied the difference between experimental probability and theoretical probability. We know that experimental probability depends on a large number of trials of an experiment and theoretical probability is based on possible outcomes of an experiment. We know that the difference between the experimental probability and theoretical probability is nothing but that the experimental probability depends on large number of trials of an experiment and theoretical probability is based on possible outcomes of an event. The formula for finding probability of any event is nothing but number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of all the possible outcomes. We know that the sum of probabilities of all the outcomes of an experiment is 1. We studied what are complementary events. If E is an event, then its complement is denoted by E dash and the sum of probabilities of complementary events is 1. Then we had studied that. Uh, the probability of an impossible event is 0. Does the sun rise in the west? No. We know for sure that the sun rises in the east. So, this is a sure event and what is its probability? The probability is 1. Thus, the probability of any event lies between 0 and 1. So, now it is time to practice. Let us do the first question. A bag contains a red ball, a blue ball and a yellow ball, all the balls being of the same size. Kritika takes out a ball from the bag without looking into it. What is the probability that she takes out the yellow ball and second part is red ball and th lastly the blue ball. So let Y be the event of taking out a yellow ball. B be the event of taking out the blue ball and R be the event of taking out the red ball. So we use the formula P E equal to number of all the favorable outcomes upon the number of all the possible outcomes. So since we have three balls in the bag, yellow, blue and red, so the possible outcomes is three and the number of favorable outcome of taking out the yellow ball is one. So, what is our probability? The probability of taking out a yellow ball is number of outcomes favorable to y and number of divided by the number of all the possible outcomes, which is nothing but 1 upon 3. Similarly, the probability of taking out the red ball is 1 upon 3 and probability of taking out a blue ball is 1 by 3 and this is our answer. Let us proceed to the next question. Two dice are thrown at the same time. Find the probability of getting the same number on both dice and second part different numbers on both dice. This is question number 19 of exercise 13.3 of NCRT exemplar book. So let us see when two dice are thrown at the same time what are the possible outcomes. In this diagram you may uh, come across dice in which the number on the first dice would be 1 and the number on the second dice would be again 1. Similarly, if it is 1 on the first dice, it can be 2 on the second dice. Likewise, moving in this, continuing in this manner, we may get uh, all such possible outcomes. So, how many are these? Let me just write this table into a number format. So, we may get all such possible outcomes. How many are these? So, these are, if you count these outcomes, these are 36 in number. So, the number of all the possible outcomes is 36. So, now let us solve the first part. Let E be the event that same number appears on both the dice. Okay. So, what are the favorable outcomes? So, we have the favorable outcomes as 1, 1. 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5 and 6, 6. Why? 
because one appears on first dice and the same number one appears on the second dice as well. So this is true for all numbers till six. How many are the favorable outcomes? We have, if you count these outcomes, we have uh, favorable outcomes as six in number, okay? So we apply the same formula. That is the number of favorable outcomes upon the number of all the possible outcomes, which is PE equal to NE upon NS. And the favorable outcomes are six and the total possible outcomes are 36. So this is probability is six by 36, which is equivalent to one by six. And this is our answer. Isn't that easy? Let's solve the second part. Let F be the event of getting different numbers on both the dice, okay? So we'll find the favorable outcomes. What are the favorable outcomes? We know that total outcomes are 36. And in the first part, we had found the favorable outcomes as six. That means uh, these favorable outcomes were for the same number appearing on both the dice. So what do we do? We subtract six from 36 to get favorable outcomes as 30. So the favorable outcomes for the event of getting different numbers on both dice is 30. We apply the same formula. That is the number of favorable outcomes upon the number of possible outcomes for finding the probability, which is 30 upon 36 and which is equivalent to 5 by 6. And this is our answer. Let us proceed to the next question. Two dice are thrown simultaneously. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers appearing on the dice is 7 prime number and third part is 1? So let us read once again. Two dice are thrown simultaneously. So what is the sample space? In earlier question, we looked that the sample space of throwing two dice is 36. This is the sample space and what are the total number of possible outcomes? The possible outcomes are 36. What is the probability that the sum of numbers, important phrase is sum of numbers, okay? Remember this, sum of numbers appearing on the dice is 7 prime number and 1. So let us solve the first part. Let E be the event that sum of numbers appearing on both dice is 7. In this sample space, in this table, I have highlighted the sum of numbers for your understanding. For example, if 1 appears on first dice and 6 appears on second dice, what is the sum of numbers? It is 7. Similarly, 2 plus 5 is 7, 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus 3 is 7, 5 plus 2 is 7, and 6 plus 1 is 7. So these are our favorable outcomes. How many are these? If you count these, these are 6 in number. So the favorable outcomes are 6 in number, and we have written NE equal to 6, which is number of events that the sum of numbers appearing on both sides dice is 7. So n equal to 6 and number of possible outcomes is 36. We will apply the same formula for finding probability and we get that 6 upon 36 which is equivalent to 1 by 6 as our answer. Let us solve the second part. Let E be the event that the sum of numbers on both the dice be a prime number. So notice that we need to find the probability of sum of numbers to be a prime number. Okay. If we go back to the previous slide and refer to this table, we need to find those outcomes whose sum is a prime number. So see here, 1 plus 1. Is it 2? So there is a prime number. So we will mark this. What about 1 plus 2? 1 plus 2 is 3, which is again a prime number. So this is a favorable outcome. What about 1 plus 3? This is 4. 
this is not a prime number, so we will leave it. What about 1 plus 4? This is 5, this is again a prime number. This is the favorable outcome. So in this manner, we will mark all the favorable outcomes in this table and if we go to the next slide, I have written all the favorable outcomes for you. And how many are these? These are 15 in number. Let us calculate the probability. Again, the same formula, number of favorable outcomes upon the number of all the possible outcomes, which is 15 upon 36. Whenever two dice are thrown, our possible outcomes remain the same, that is 36. I have drawn the table in every question for your understanding. You need not draw this table every time, it will save a lot of time of yours. So, 56 is equivalent to 5 by 12 and this is our answer. Let us solve the third part. Let E be the event that sum of numbers on both dice be 1. Again refer to this table. Please see this table carefully. Can you find any of the outcome in which the sum of numbers is 1? I do not think so. Why? Because there is no outcome such as which says 0, 1 or 1, 0. So, this is a case of impossible event. We cannot find any number, any outcome whose uh, wherein the sum of digits is 1. It has to be greater than 1. So, what is the probability of an impossible event? This is 0. And so, 0 is our answer. Isn't this very easy? Let us move to the next question. Two dice are thrown together. Find the probability that the product of numbers on top of dice is 6, 12 and 7. So, in this question, we need to find the probability of product of numbers. Okay. So, let us refer to the table. So, again two dice are thrown. So, we have the sample space like this in which the possible or all, all the possible outcomes are 36. Let us solve the first part. So, all the possible outcomes we denoted by S and which is equal to 36. Okay. So, our first part, let E be the event such that we get the product of numbers, product as 6. So, we need to find the favorable outcomes. What are the favorable outcomes? See, favorable outcomes, first of all, it would be this one. Why? Because 1 into 6 is 6. Then the other one would be 2, 3 is a 6. Next, it would be 3, 2 is a 6. And last, it would be 6, 1 is a 6. Can we find any other favorable outcome? Let us see in the table. No. So, these are our favorable outcomes. Let us write these. How many are these? These are 4 in number. So, we get the number of favorable outcomes as 4, right? What is our required probability? We use the formula P e equal to N e upon N s which is equal to 4 by 
36 and this is equal to 1 by 9. Why? Because 4 9s are 36 and this is our required answer. Got it? Let us move to the second part. So, let us solve the second part. So, we need to find the probability of product of numbers on the top of the dice such that the product is 12. Okay. So, let us mark in this table. First of all, it would be 3 4s are 12, 2 6s are 12, 4 3s are 12, and 6 into 2, 12. So, we have favorable outcomes as these. Let us write these. First of all, let E be the event that the product of numbers is 12. So, what is our sample space? Sample space is 2, 6, 3, 4, 4, 3 and 6, 2. And how many are these? So, we have n equal to number of favorable outcomes equal to 4. What is our required probability? The required probability is P e equal to number of favorable outcomes upon the number of all the possible outcomes. And this is equal to 4 upon 36. equal to 1 by 9 and this is our required answer. Did you understand? Let us solve the third part. In this, we need to find the probability such that the product of numbers is 7. Okay. So, let us write this. Again, we consider E to be the event such that the product of numbers is 7. Again, have a look at this table. Can we find any outcome wherein the product of numbers is 7? Let us look at it carefully. I do not think so. Can you? No. So, what is a favorable outcome? Nothing. As in, the favorable outcome. is 0. Why? Because this is an impossible event. We cannot find any outcome wherein the product of numbers is 7. Okay. So, this is an impossible event and what is the probability of an impossible event? Yes, you are right. It is 0 and this is our required answer, simple as that. Let us move to the next question. A coin is tossed 3 times, list the possible outcomes and find the probability of getting all heads, at least 2 heads and last part at most one head. We again read this question. A coin is tossed three times. Now, we have a coin. Visualize yourself. A coin is tossed three times. One, two and three. Okay. 
let us understand with the help of a diagram. On the first toss, we can we get either head or tail. On the second toss, if we are getting head on the first toss, then in the, on the second toss, we can get head or tail. Similarly, for tail, we can get head or tail. And for the third toss, we can get all these possible outcomes. So, what are the possible outcomes? On the first toss, if we get head and then again we toss a coin, we again get head, right? And again we can get head or tail. So, the first outcome would be head, 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 which is this. Then the second outcome would be head, head, tail, which is this. Third outcome would be head, tail, head. And fourth one would be head, tail, tail. Similarly, if we get tail, we would get all these outcomes. Okay. Let us write our sample space. On the first toss, if we get head, second toss, we again get head, then third toss, we again get head. Similarly, we can get head, head, tail. All these are possible outcomes. How many are these? Let us count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, the number of all the possible outcomes when we toss a coin 3 times is 8. We write it as n s equal to 8. Okay. Now, let us solve the first part. We get all the heads. Let E be the event such that we get all heads. That means, what is our favorable outcome? This is H, H and H. Any other? You have all the possible outcomes here. Look at these. So, the number of favorable outcome is 1. So, what is our probability? This is probability of the event upon n e upon n s that is number of favorable outcome upon number of all the possible outcomes. Okay. And this is equal to 1 upon Eight. And this is our required answer for first part. Let us move to the second part. So, let E be the event that we get at least two heads. at least two heads. What do we mean by at least? At least means two or more heads. Okay. So, what is the favorable outcome? Two 
two heads H H T H T H T H H and H H H at least two outcomes remember two or more or more heads two or more heads means two heads in these outcomes and two or more that means three heads in this outcome so what is the number of favorable outcome we have n e equal to 4 and what was n s n s was 8 so what is the required probability required probability is P e equal to n e upon n s which is equal to 4 upon 8 and this is half right and this is the required answer ok. Did you understand? Let us go to the third part. We need to find the probability of getting at most one head. Let us solve this. So, E be the event of getting at most one head. Now, what does at most mean? At most means one or less, one or zero head. So, what are the favorable outcomes? Let us see, we just need one head. lastly 0 head that means all the tails ok. So, we have n e equal to 4 right and the required probability n e equal to sorry p e equal to n e upon n s which is equal to 4 upon 8. Remember the all the possible outcomes as 8, right? You can count these. And this is equivalent to 1 by 2. Correct? Let us move to the next question. It says the king, queen and jack of clubs are removed from a deck of 52 playing cards ok and then well shuffled. Let us read this again. The king, queen and jack of clubs are removed from a deck of 52 playing cards and then well shuffled. Now one card is drawn at random from the remaining cards. Determine the probability that the card is a heart a king, a club and the number 10 of hearts. So, we already know that a deck of 52 playing cards has 4 suits, clubs, spades, hearts and diamonds and each suit has 13 cards, right. So, that makes 52 cards. The question says the king, queen and jack. of clubs. So, here we have club suit and these three cards are removed ok. How many are left? So, the number of cards we have is 52 minus 3 which is equal to 49 cards 
remember this number, 49 cards. The total possible outcomes are 49. Okay, let us solve the first part. E, the, e be the event that we have a heart, okay. A heart means we need to have one heart out of these all the 13 cards. So what are the favorable outcomes? So the number of favorable outcome is 13, right? Since we have 13 cards of hearts and all of them, all of the, all of the cards are there, okay? So what is the required probability? Number of favorable outcomes upon number of all the possible outcomes, which comes to 13 upon 49. This is your answer. Very easy, right? Let us solve the second part. We need to find the probability of drawing a card such that it is a king. So, we do not have these three cards, right? We know the all the possible outcomes as 49, right? We found it earlier in the first part. Now, how many kings are there? There are four kings of clubs, spades, hearts and diamonds. But the question says, we do not have king, queen and jack of clubs, right? So, I have removed it for you. So, how many are left? Only three kings are left, right? So, the favorable outcome is 3. So, what is the required probability? It is very simple. Number of favorable outcomes upon number of all the possible outcomes. That means 3 upon 49. This is the answer. Okay, that was quite easy. Let us move to the third part. We need to find the probability that the card drawn is a club. What is a club? Where is the club? Club suit is here, out of which we do not have these three cards. Question says so, right? So, how many cards are left? We just have 10 cards of club's suit. So, if E is the event of drawing a club card, then the number of favorable outcomes is 10, right? And the number of all the possible outcomes, it remains the same, 49. So, our required probability n e upon n s equal to 10 upon 49. Very easy. Let us move to the fourth part. Remember that we do not have these three cards and 10 of hearts is this one. So, let E be the event of getting 10 of hearts. So, what is the number of favorable outcome? Very simple, it is just 1. And what is the required probability? P e equal to number of favorable outcomes upon number of all the possible outcomes, which is equal to 1 by 49. And this is our required answer. Okay, understood? With this question, we end today's session. I hope you understood it well. Practice as much as you can 
and come out with flying colors in your exams. All the best students. Thank you.